thank you. Uh, thanks for having me, uh, especially since uh, I'm a kind of an outsider here, uh, since I study literature and not translation. Uh, but uh, today uh, I would like you uh, to propose uh, this poster uh, in order to explore how Virginia Woolf and Anierno perform the role of translators of their own selves by including a kind of photographic writing a photographic uh, discourse into their writing, their life writing. So um, I'm thinking of translation in kind of a broad sense, so uh, how uh, the visual elements can be translated into writing and how life writing can be considered as a translation of one's past, of oneself. Um, so uh, in a sketch of the past, uh, Virginia Woolf uh, retraces as her first childhood memories and uh, she kind of translates uh, these um, experiences which she called moments of being which are um, called by Emily Dargarno as experiences of light so um, she translates uh, these moments into her memoir and she uh, in a way she proposes uh, a way of expanding the possibilities of language Whereas in Memoir de Fille, uh, a girl's story uh, in the English version by Anierno, uh, Anierno attempts uh, to come to terms with uh, a traumatic experience uh, uh, underwent, undergone uh, in the, um, uh, during her years as a teenager, uh, and she employs photography uh, and sight in order to confront herself. Um, as uh, the girl of 1958, uh, as she calls herself in the book. So, um, while photography is kind of latent in Wolf and physically absent in her no, um, they both uh, take advantage of uh, these intermediaries, of this interplay between word and images, um, and they use uh, their life writing as kind of a text test site to uh, experiment and find new possibilities of translating the different versions of uh, their identity. Um, so in order to analyze this uh, word image relationship in these two texts, I first uh, consider Jacobson's uh, intersemiotic translation, even if he intended it uh, in the opposite way, so uh, as a translation from the verbal into the non-verbal sign system. Uh, and I actually ended up reading uh, Lilian Louvel, uh, who uh, refers to uh, pictorial descriptions in literary texts as kind of translations of visual signifiers into verbal signifiers, so that's what I'm interested in. So how uh, can we transpose or translate uh, images, mm, photographs, optical images, or visual memories. And um, Louvel proposes uh, this uh, intermedial approach. So she actually mm, shifted uh, from the intersemiotic notion to this kind of intermedial notion. Um, and she uh, proposed a typology of markers um, in order to pinpoint the presence of what she calls a foreign medium, such as a visual element. So uh, uh, images are kind of uh, considered as others from the text. Um, and so she kind of devised uh, this method to, um, to analyze how images um, can be translated into literary writing. So, um, I, following this typology, uh, I selected a few excerpts from the, uh, the books. Um, and these excerpts, in my opinion, uh, can be said to uh, contain pictorial and photographic allusions and descriptions. And um, here, uh, this is of course a selection of the selection, <laughs> Uh, here I just uh, identified uh, these um, passages uh, on the basis of focalization and point of view. And I could find some key concepts okay, in common between the two authors. So uh, they both uh, engaged a confrontation 
between the past and the present self and uh, they do this by the means of sight so uh, they both look at the past as something you know happening uh, like uh, <laughs> Uh, like in a movie or in, a mean, in an image that you are observing and especially Erno uh, confronts herself in the past uh, like she looks at her memories uh, and she speaks of herself as in the third person so she kindly uh, distances herself from the girl of 1958 and she observes her while doing her things, you know, so while living, so she, it's kind of seeing the writer uh, looking at this other person from a distance or from a CCTV camera. <laughs> and um, of course, there is uh, the topic of memory and vision <laughs> and other so many things. I just try to condense in this presentation, but I'm happy to discuss them later. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia. Do you have any questions for Julia? Okay. I wonder if you um, came across this idea of translation, even though metaphorically conceived in other works by Virginia Woolf and Annie Arno, or is it just something that comes up in uh, Moments of Being and uh, Motley Are there <laughs> any other texts that kind of. Uh, yeah, well, uh, Wolf actually. Uh, I mean, Wolf's work are very visual, so uh, definitely a sketch of the past is not the only case, uh, but uh, also her novels, for example, Mrs. Dalloway, or To the Lighthouse, To the Lighthouse is like, <laughs> namely the visual novel. Uh, of course, there are many references, uh, pictorial references, or so references to painting, but there is, uh, I feel, uh, and I think there is also a very strong influence uh, from photography, and this is actually uh, the object of my dissertation, so definitely, yeah. And also, I mean, I know, um, employed photography in other works, so it's kind of a, a trademark in a way. So, I like that. <laughs> Thank you very much again. And before we can enjoy our break, I think. No, we can enjoy our break. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you know, coffee and tea are available in the room before this. Um,